Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good morning. It's about 10 o'clock and again, hotter than hell. The minute you walk out of your house, it's like, whew, it's like you can cut the humidity with a knife. Just crazy. It's like I live in a bubble full of humidity. I mean, it's just terrible. Thankfully, I think we're having a storm tonight or tomorrow and uh, I might put some fertilizer down in my backyard for once because uh, Boba is so hot these days with his mink coat, right? that he doesn't even want to come outside, it's so hot, you know? So I figure I could put some fertilizer in the back and maybe the backyard will start looking a little bit like a lawn, you know what I mean? As you guys saw from uh, yesterday, surprisingly, the Jamal Alatet wasn't as hard to get going as I thought it would be. Looks can obviously be deceiving, right? It looked like complete hell, right? That no way am I gonna get this going. In the back of my mind, I knew that I knew the engine at least ran or cranked with starting fluid. So um, half the job is already done when you got a running engine, you know what I mean? I, I didn't have to build one from scratch like I've done previously. So uh, as you guys saw from yesterday's episode, ran pretty decent. There's something hinky about the choke cable, which I have to figure out today. And uh, it actually ran pretty good. I was driving this thing around. Good power, really good power. It's uh, 20 horsepower, you know, V-twin. Uh, anyway, so um, I said yesterday that the guy was going to come and pick up my uh, Desert Sand Humvee military-themed Franken Tractor 2 project, right? Uh, I had it listed for $1,000. We agreed on 650, which I'm completely fine with, you know. It's a hauler, after all. You know what I'm saying? But... Uh, my episode was done yesterday before Paul came to pick it up. But this is what happened yesterday after I uploaded yesterday's video. So as you guys saw, I sold the uh, Desert Sand Humvee. Uh, guy gave me 650. I'm fine with 650. After all, it's a it's a hauler. You know what I'm saying? And uh, while I did put in a lot of time with it, that's the whole point. You know, I I make the project and you know you enjoy it a little bit. You share it with all you guys, right? Share the experience, share the the theme of it with all you guys, and then it moves on to another person. You know what I mean? Let them enjoy it. You know. Um, Paul's got to come back with the sun because they forgot the ramps. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys later. So that... So that's what happened yesterday. Uh, came and picked it up. He got it home safely. He was driving it around with the sun for a block or so. He was having a great time. Awesome. As long as I can put a smile to somebody's face for a mere $650, I'm all for it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so today I'm going to address why the PTO doesn't work. Uh, and I looked a little bit yesterday. There's no, there's a double pulley on each of the spindles on the mower deck. So it's missing the whole belt that connects to the, <laughs> connects to the uh, crankshaft electric clutch. So I have to find a belt for that. Because yesterday when I was engaging the PTO switch, right, I could hear it. The magnet's going tsk. You know, so I, I think it works, you know, the electric clutch, clutch uh, switch and the clutch itself. I think it works. I just need to find a belt that attaches to the spindles to have the mower deck spindles spin, the blades. But um, I think all the blades are seized. I tried turning the pulleys. It won't turn. So I might have to remove the deck and loosen it up, which I've done a thousand times. You know what I mean? A hundred times, not a thousand times. Maybe like 50 times. Maybe 35 times. Anyway, uh, so the deck I gotta work out. I might have to replace that choke cable because it's so seized I can't, you know, open or close that choke flap at all, you know? Which I think is stuck in, in an area where it's not gonna work, you know what I mean? Also, I've gotta get rid of this erector set shin destroyer. I almost ran into this thing three times yesterday, completely killed my leg, you know what I mean? So that's what I gotta do. Also, a guy has come to look at my McLean Edger. So 
So I uh, sold my McLean um, Edger to this guy who didn't have a GPS. So I had to give him directions on how to get here. He has a flip phone, you know what I mean? So he doesn't have a GPS. So I had to give him like directions as if it was a map. Anyway, so I sold the McLean. I had it listed for 75, then down to 50, and then down to 30, and then he talked me down to 20, and I'm like, okay. Let's get it out of my face. Uh, my wife picked up some more topsoil and uh, filled some of the holes that Boba dug, and I think I got all the sprinklers worked out because I haven't had pools of water since I fixed it, so I think I'm good to go. Uh, it is so hot today that I got to work in the garage today for sure because you'll sweat to death in this weather. So pictures obviously not going to be as good as working outside, but look, it's either I work indoors or there's no video because I refuse to work in this weather. It's just, it's completely inhumane. In the garage, I go. As you know, um, tires don't hold air. So I'm going to have to put some ATF in here and pump up the tires. Also, while I have the air compressor out, I'm going to try to blow water out of this gas tank. I'm going to keep doing this for a while. Then ATF and the tires. I think I blew out as much as I could blow out. Uh, I think maybe it might just take, keep the cap off and have this crazy sun, this heat, just evaporate the water that's in there, you know? It's just a matter of time before it does. Anyway, so I just took the valve out of the... Uh, valve? <laughs> out of the stem. And I'm going to attach my bottle of ATF in here and squeeze that's like three ounces another squeeze like another three ounces because this is a big tire though maybe I should put like eight ounces in there so I think I have like six in here right now this bottle was full so more than two-thirds I guess This, this wasn't leaking as bad as the other one, so I think that'll be good. Top this bottle off a little bit more with the remaining quart that I have of ATF. And pump this baby up too. Can you believe it? The Erector Shin Destroyer is actually welded on. So unless I want to take a grinder to that thing, I'm going to put a pillow on there so if I walk into it, I won't destroy my shins. At least just for now. Being with uh, penetrating oil all night, um, that lever is still not moving. So I'm gonna have to just get rid of the get rid of the choke cable altogether. Of course, I can't get this in there. I'm losing the choke cable over here. Remove it from the dash. So I removed the choke cable. Right, it's seized. I need to find another choke cable. I don't think I have one this long, so I might have to fabricate something. But anyway, so check this out. The reason why I think it was running kind of rough on idle was because it was stuck in this position, okay? So here's fully closed, okay? It was stuck about like that. So not completely open like that, but partially closed. So I think that might have had something to do with it. Just looking at the carburetor right here uh, with the naked eye, it's very clean. I don't know about the bowl or anything, but um, it, it runs pretty well with the choke stuck like that. You know what I mean? So let me go and find a choke cable and see if I could, you know, rig it. Even if the choke cable has to be just like right here, you know, pull it over here to choke. It's supposed to pull it over there, you know, but I need to get it to work for now and then see if what I can come up with. Okay, so it looks like I got a choke cable worked out. Uh, it's not perfect. 
just made a loop at the end here for the push and the pull. So here, look at that. Pull, closed, push down, open. Pull closed, push open. And so the choke is worked out. Carburetor looks clean from the outside. Uh, I'm going to put the mesh round thing back on here. I'm going to put the air cleaner back on there. Put the cover back on there. I attach this uh, fuel pump with another screw over here. Put the <clears throat> voltage regulator back. Well, it was just hanging. Put it back there. Got the ground strap here attached. It was running without the ground strap anyway. I'm going to put a fuel filter on the line. And I believe that I got all the uh, water out of the tank. So uh, I'm gonna connect the I'm gonna connect the fuel pump the fuel pump type fuel filter on there. And I'm gonna put the gas in the back and see if it runs that way. All right. So uh, got the ATF in the tires. Uh, just the rears, the front seem to hold air okay. Uh, put the front cover on, the air filter back on. Got the choke cable replaced with a makeshift one. Uh, depends on how this thing goes, if I decide to keep it or continue fixing it, whatever, I'll probably go and buy a new choke cable. <gasps> oh my God, go spend money? Oh my God. Well, I'm in it already for uh, about 30 bucks for the new battery, right? So uh, $10 for a choke cable might be worth it. Uh, it's a good engine, seems like it at least. Let's see if it runs better with the uh, new choke cable, because remember, the choke plate was stuck into one area. Put this top thing back on. I'm, I hope it doesn't scrape, you know, but this engine now looks complete, you know? So, uh, oh, and I connected the um, fuel line back to the rear gas tank. So we'll see whether or not that gas tank still has water in it, whatever, but I doubt it. I blew it out pretty well. So I got a new fuel filter on there now, and so now it's running off the, well, we don't know if it's running yet, but we'll find out if it runs, uh, off the original rear fuel tank, okay? So that's pretty good. I'm going to I'm going to roll this to the uh, outside of the garage, and then we're going to try to crank it up and see if it starts and runs good. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Choke is off. Throttle. Uh-oh. I, I had the ignition switch on the whole time. I bet you the battery's dead. Hmm, what? Choking? It needs time for the gas to get through, you know?
as you saw, good news is it runs off the rear gas tank now. So the fuel pump and the fuel, ga uh, the fuel tank, they're all working fine without that auxiliary gas tank that I had hanging on the side, right? So now, uh, obviously you see it surges pretty badly. Uh, once you dial in the choke at one throttle, that air fuel mixture is perfect, you know what I mean? But uh, if you do lower idle with the choke all the way to run, it's going to surge a lot. So, unfortunately, I think I might have to clean the carburetor. Yeah. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I've never done a Kohler Command V-Twin carburetor before. I've watched Tarrell do it on his videos. It looks pretty damn complicated. I'm not going to lie. I'm not looking forward to it. But I guess I'm just going to go ahead and... Take it apart piece by piece and see what we find, you know? Maybe it's not too dirty, maybe it's kind of dirty, but uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, other than that, uh, I'm pretty happy that it's running off the gas tank in the back now. And uh, you know, the choke cable kind of works, you know what I mean? It's a little hard to push in and out and stuff, but it's good enough, I guess. And it runs, you know? Guess I'm gonna have to take apart the carburetor. Okay, here we go. My first Kohler Command V-Twin carburetor clean. I'm gonna try to do this without taking apart everything. Because from what I saw in the Tarot video, there was a ton of linkages. A ton. Imagine this cover would have to come off. Sorry, Kohler, 10 millimeter. Disconnect the breather. I believe that's a PCD. Huh. Alright. Oh, fuel solenoid. How about that, huh? Wonder if I could just drop the bowl and take a look. Maybe I'll do that. Would I need to do this? Why not? Let's let's do it. Because if we take the fuel line off, maybe we could see something that we didn't see before. You know. So the whole carburetor seems like it could come off. It's very loose. I've never seen a line here like that before. I don't think you can disconnect it either. See, that's what's holding it on here. I guess I'm going to have to take this off. It's like, a, it's like a ground wire almost, you know? It's a good thing I have it recorded so I can see what I'm doing later if I forget. But there are a few linkages here attached. Don't lose that one. I'll have to figure out a muffler too. Holy cow. Alright, so. I don't know what that is. Alright, I got it. So, small little tension wire in the small hole.
You disconnect the solenoid wire here. It's the choke. It's a Z bend. Oh. All right. Choke. Throttle cable. Look at the look at the um the small tension wire. It's not even hooked up on the other side unless it just popped off right there. So there it is right there. There be the carburetor. You know that really wasn't all that tough. Maybe I was watching another video. Hmm. Anyway, I'm gonna take this bowl off and let's see what we find on the inside. It doesn't look too bad. If I could just remember how this all went, you know? And the gasket over here is good, too. Because it has to be a nice tight seal between the uh, intake manifold and the uh, carburetor. I got an adjustable wrench. This comes off pretty easily. It's pretty clean. Ooh, look at that. Cloudy. It's got water in it too. See? Lots of crap in there. Let me get a pretty clean thing here. And I'll cup it and show you what comes out of it. See all that stuff there? It's all gook. Look at that. It's like gelatin. It's all in this bowl. So this is being sucked up through the emulsion tube. And that's not going to let it run well. Plus, there was a little bit of water in the bottom there, too. Hmm. That's just some jets are clogged, too. It's interesting. It's not in terrible shape, though. Tip looks good. Rubbery. I'm glad it doesn't have a rubber seat in there, too, because if it's a rubber seat, it could get trashed. It's just a tip. Clean that up. Mm. It looks like I could. There's a screw in there that I could turn something. I'm gonna give it a slight little turn. If I can't get it done, I'm not gonna try. Mm, can't do it because there's an emulsion tube in the way of the grain of the uh, slot. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to mess up a decent thing. I mean, it, it runs okay, you know? I think it's just dirty, you know? I'm not going to go ruin something and then end up having to buy another carburetor. I'm looking for the fuel mixture screw. I don't really see it. Now I'm looking at this contraption. I don't remember I guess this could only be the choke hole there. And over here can only be the throttle one. But look at here. Over here looks like there should be a screw in there. And there's a screw over here. But it looks like there should be a screw in there. Actually, no, it looks like there should be a screw in here too. There are two of them, so maybe not. Wouldn't it suck if there's supposed to be a screw in there and a screw in here? It doesn't have it. <laughs> well, let's see how many turns it was. One, two, three, four. Four turns. It's kind of a lot, actually. It should only be one and a half. It's a nice, nice sharp needle there. I'm using some. Contact cleaner for our friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Uh 
Aha! See how that works. Look at that little hole right there. That little hole? That's where this went, see? Look. That doesn't seem like it goes anywhere. That doesn't seem like it does anything. That doesn't seem like it does anything. This hole. I don't see that doing nothing either. Uh -huh. uh, that's the primer hole right here. Got myself in the face. You know what? This screw here, look, you could turn it. If there's a screw that you can remove, you gotta try and remove it. Because it could be blocked. Letting it roll, baby! Because I've never done a Polar Command V-Twin carburetor. So maybe you guys haven't either. So I'm showing you everything I do. No editing. You're getting tired and bored or you're an expert. Skip to the end! That's clear. Don't lose it, Henry. All right, I won't. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Came out a couple places. That doesn't go anywhere. Though. This is clear. Crystal clear. Are we clear? Crystal. What's that movie from? What's that from? Okay, okay, take it easy. I love Mary, man! Alright, well, that's pretty good. That's all there is to it, you know? Let me get a, um... Oh, there you go. Here's an old one. Yeah, it's trashed. I'm gonna get a squeegee, uh, a, not a squeegee, Q-tip. All right, so I'm going to take a Q-tipsy. I'm going to pump you full of lead, see? And I'm going to... What did I do? Okay. I'm going to make sure the canal is clean and smooth so that the needle doesn't hang up on it. If this canal is not properly lubricated and smooth to allow the needle to move in and out of the canal smoothly, <laughs> it could get stuck. Know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. 
Here's the needle. I'm gonna take it out. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. That's right. I have lost my mind. So I'm just, you know. Oh, look at that. See how dirty that is. If it's dirty, it's not gonna be smooth. And if it's not smooth, it could get hung up. And if it gets hung up, either you're not gonna get fuel or you're leaking fuel everywhere. I'm pretty satisfied with that tr that situation right there. Put that back in like that. What did I do with that thing? Stick it in the hole. Henry, I don't appreciate your windows. Go get your own windows. I don't care. All right. That's pretty good. That's pretty clean. We blew that. We blew that hole out too. Where did that go? That go right here. So I'm going to turn it in all the way because maybe before the four turns was just too much, you know. So I'm turning it in all the way. That's all the way. That's all the way. I'm going to back it out one and a half. One, two, three. That should be the setting that it's at, like from the manufacturer. Should I take this plate off? I don't really know what this plate is for. Oh, man. I'm never going to live with myself unless I take this off. I don't even know what it's for. I'm gathering there's a diaphragm in here. That's what I'm thinking. I find it unusual that there's a, there was a ground strap to it, though. Don't lose the screws, Henry. I know this video is going to be like an hour. Here we go. What's under this flap? Be careful. Don't break it. Ah, it is a kind of a diaphragm thing. Doesn't want to let loose, fellas. Gotta see what's in there. Oh, it's a gasket. Gasket, Henry? It is. It's like a diaphragm. Wow. I can't see, Henry. Alright, I have to see two. Look at that. Look at... There's like five holes in there. You see that? See the five tiny little holes? Are those holes or is that like seeds? Oh, there's like one, two, three, four. Yeah, there's like five little tiny... You see that? I've never seen that ever. And then there's another jet that you can take out. Or like they say in Canada, oh. Holy cow. That's a lot of holes. That's offensive, Henry. Shut up. Very interesting. I will say it's very interesting. Guess what? There's another tiny jet right there that you can take apart. So if I'm able to, I have to do it. I 
got to do it. that that's like a main jet it's a good thing I took that off that's important that that was the emulsion tube from the bottom Let's see Well, that's clear and there's no side holes you know how most of these things this the main jets have so holes on the side this one doesn't have any it's just one straight shot there right so actually I don't think you needed to take that out but now we took it out so we know and it's clean uh, it's pretty good Should I take this thing off and look underneath? I don't see the point, right? It's just the gasket it covers up this. There's no holes other than the ones that hold it on, so I don't think so. Remember to leave that one open because you got to put the one with the ground strap that goes on there. I think that's the one. That's the one, Henry. So normally I'd cut it right now and you guys could imagine me putting it back together. But since I've already let this roll so much, I might as well just take it to the end. Like I said, everyone, if you are getting tired of watching the assembly, so you can skip forward if you want, I don't mind. Alright, am I forgetting anything other than the... Oh, so I got to clean this a little bit, all right? I'll be back. There we go. That's pretty clean. I wonder if it matters which way this goes. That went like that. I don't remember how this went. You know this thing? I would think that this would be around here. Not that it makes any difference, I don't think. It doesn't really go anywhere either. Whatever. Oh. Hold it up. This thing has a jet on the fuel solenoid. And I don't actually see a valve that opens and closes. That's very interesting. I'm going to take this out. I'm not gonna! I'm gonna! Ooh. All right. Tiny little jet. It's clean. It's not blocked. I'll prove it to you. Very clean. Doesn't go anywhere, no hole. Unless it's energized, maybe it opens. I'm not sure. Never seen one like this. I'm sure something retracts and the the hole here and the hole there and that thing holds down to open it up. I'm sure that's what happens. And since this was running, I assume it works. That's very interesting. See? Just gotta try. Alright, well that's that. Here we go. I'm gonna put this back together again, once and for all. Uh, we learned about how this carburetor works. Pretty cool. Uh, it says over here on the side, made in Japan. How about that? See, so when you see China, 
you think quality, no good, cheap, right? You think Japan, you think expensive and excellent quality. Here's a question for you. Do you guys find that if you it says made in USA, that you find it better quality than if it, it said made in Japan? I hate to tell you guys, when I see made in Japan, I think the quality is better. The USA, the quality is definitely going to be better than China. Then honestly, I've been buying Chinese carbs a lot. Almost 99% of my parts are Chinese carbs. And I've only had maybe a 1%, um, you know, failure rate. That's not bad. All right, I'm going to stop talking now, and I uh, guess I'm going to put this back. Everything seems okay. Would you guys not agree? Have I missed anything for you uh, experts out there? All right, what should I do first? Small little tension spring. You can't see, Henry. Oh, sorry, I forgot. I'm going to do the tension spring first. That's usually the most difficult to get. Oh, sons of bitches, now that thing came off over here. See, I don't even know where this spring goes. The other end of that spring, I don't even know where that goes. It doesn't seem to be a hole in it. A hole for it. Make sure all, the, all of this works. The screw that put the ground strap on, I just put that on. Remember later, I could adjust the fuel mixture right here. It's on top, very convenient. So I'm not gonna put that cover on. Now we connect the fuel solenoid wire. Tuck it behind there. The fuel hose. Hose clamp. Two, three, eight bolt of uh, ten millimeter bolts. Nope, 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 nope. The plate. The plate goes on first. Hmm. That go on like this? Yeah. Connect the vent hose. What do you think? Is that right? I think that's right. Unless I have it upside down. No? That's good. That wasn't too tough, right? Of course, we haven't tried this yet, so we don't... We don't know if, uh, 
it'll work right. But we're going to try it out right now. We have just cleaned the carburetor. Non-edited, letting it roll. From taking it apart, cleaning every orifice, putting it back together again. It took like uh, 45 minutes, but you know, we are recording. Shut up, Henry! Alright, here we go. I'm gonna start it. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna. Should I choke? I'm choking it. Here we go. Half throttle. Key on. Switch. choke off. Choke back on. Hmm. The plot thickens. Missing something here, fellas. Doesn't stop. I just sprayed some carb spray into the mouth. did it to the lowest throttle, that's what happened. So now it won't start.
got that dialed in pretty well. It idles a little fast, um, but um, if I lowered it any more, it, it almost wants to stall. It starts to um, vibrate a little bit, you know, so uh, that's pretty good. As you guys see, that carburetor clean did it. It doesn't, um, it doesn't stall anymore because we uh, adjusted the fuel mixture screw on the top there. It really actually works, believe it or not. And um, it doesn't surge anymore at high or low throttle. So that was it. The bowl was dirty, filled with crap, blowing out the orifices, cleaning all the jets and stuff, did it. Sounds great. Uh, I'm thinking about whether or not I should put a muffler on here because it sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty mean, you know, but it is pretty loud. Uh, the exhaust manifold is in okay condition, you know what I mean? It's the muffler itself that was just like trash. It was Dunsky. Trash. So I have this little, I don't know, it, almost two inches, inch and three quarters sticking out. I like they say in Canada, sticking out. So how am I, and it's so close to the wheel. This wheel is hot right now, very hot. And so, should I just find a pipe that goes that way or that way? Or up. I actually have a pipe that goes up, but I would have to chop a hole through the hood for it to stick up like that. And then when you try to open the hood, it'll get in the way. Unless I had it sticking out, but then it'll hit the wheel, you know? So... I'd have to find some kind of muffler for, for there, you know? But uh, that's another day. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to figure out the muffler and the mower deck. I'd have to take the mower deck off, loosen up the blades, the spindles, and the pulleys because they're seized. And then find a belt to connect the mower deck to the extra PTO clutch. That's a big part of it today, fellas! Uh... Put ATF in all the tires. Change the choke cable so that the choke cable works with this. Uh, that wasn't the problem of why it uh, wasn't running right. We fixed that surging issue from cleaning the carburetor today. Thanks a lot for joining me on episode two of this Jamal Alatet project. We'll see you guys tomorrow for episode three. <laughs> see you guys next time on mowers and bowlers. Here at mowers and blowers, we push them into the garage, but they come out driving.